Johnson was demanding the financial records. It was only Cathay Bank who handed them over. Now we know that James Comer on the House Oversight Committee has received some banking records from American banks, but only having to do with one deal. Comer says there are 11 other deals out there that he thinks will be similar to what he saw with the first deal, which was Rob Walker got a check for $3 million. The very next day, he sent one-plus million of that distributed to Biden family members. Uh, well, Maria, you know, a lot of this information was leaked when Hunter, Hunter's laptop came out and some of the Rosemont Seneca um, banking records came out. But look, when the Democrats were in charge and they demanded phone records without warrants on all sorts of people attached to the Trump orbit, uh, they were given uniformly without question. And a lot of times um, the people whose phone records were being turned over had a day or two notice to try and sue and block that. Um, it, it's just funny how none of these banks will comply with Congress now, now that it's a Democrat. Um, it, it, yeah. is, it, it is beyond the pale of a two-tier justice system uh, and the way these things work. And let's just, let's just go back in time and remind everyone, like, nobody gets a billion-dollar sole mandate from the Chinese government to start a private equity firm, especially one that doesn't have any private equity experience, especially someone that doesn't have any private equity experience and has a debilitating crack habit. So yeah. what well, type of influence did they buy as the Chinese Communist Party is running around with Russia, Saudi Arabia, Iran, setting up a, a new reserve currency to take out the United States of America? What did the Bidens give up and what is it doing to our national security? Right. And, you know, that's why we keep asking what exactly was that money? Right. And we need some clarity on uh, over exactly who is going to be the overseer here. Is it the SEC? That's exactly right. You know, is it a different agency? Let me bring in our panel. Mike Lee, jump in here. Yeah, it, it seems like all the stars are aligning, and you're seeing that in the price of Bitcoin. Every time that there's a crisis, the Fed comes out and prints more money. Um, typically, uh, you know, with bank failures, it's not just one. Maybe the Fed has it contained, but the only way they have it contained is by printing more money. And as you mentioned, we seem to be getting closer towards the end of this rate hiking cycle, which means there's probably more money printing on the way. Um, do, do you see this? Uh, can, can their stars align any better for what to expect with Bitcoin than what we're seeing right now? Uh, I love that. That is exactly right. The stars have aligned. Yeah, infinite QE, you know, new bank funding programs, swap lines to international banks. Every time there's a crisis, we've seen the Fed step in with more and more and more money. Crypto is responding to that to say, maybe we want a financial system that doesn't have short-term programs, that doesn't debase the currency. Not everyone will want to move to that system, of course, but some small fraction of the world is recognizing that it's good to have this alternative. And that's all we need to see this asset class continue to appreciate as we have this year. Lee Carter. So the the polling suggests that but on wall street top investors watching your money joining me right now is michael lee strategy founder michael lee and bull tech capital chief market strategist catherine rooney vera great to see you catherine thanks for joining the conversation mike kicking things off with you with a market that is rallying again this morning uh extending last week's gains take a look dow industrials up 187 and the s p up 23 nasdaq higher by 40 points uh, largely on news that broke overnight First Citizens Bank and Trust Company acquiring nearly $72 billion of collapsed Silicon Valley bank assets. This is a major discount that they're buying these assets at. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is considering expanding the emergency lending programs for First Republic Bank. That stock is uh, flying on that news. It's up 30 percent right now. Mike, assess these headlines this morning in the face of continued worries over the potential for more bank failures. Well, look, Maria, nobody, uh, no bank can handle a run on the bank. And, you know, the headline this morning is that there's $56 billion left of deposits at um, Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, just a few weeks ago, that number was north of $156 billion. So that's a lot of money that's gone out the door pretty quickly. And, and nobody can handle that overnight. And if you continue to see it in these kind of mid-tier, mid-sized banks, you're going to have more bank failures. I think the Fed um, opening the window to bring assets uh, with no haircuts, high-quality assets with no haircuts to be able to stem this kind of flow is a good temporary solution. But look, I, I think this slows the economy because lending standards are going to get tighter. Um, we already have a declining, you know, slowing economy to begin with. I think this accelerates that. Okay, I, I think um, 
it, it, because it, unless we see a lot more bank failures immediately, I don't think the Fed cuts rates as quickly as the market is expecting. I think earnings estimates are too high, and right now the market is trading at 17 or 18 times earnings. We are priced to perfection. So I'm I'm very you know near term bearish you know on the S and P 500. Uh, it, before I go long the market, I'd probably want to see a 10 to 15 percent correction. So what I own right now are the defensive sectors, staples, utilities, healthcare, a little bit of energy. I'm also buying gold. I, I you know I own 10 percent of my equity holdings for my clients is gold, and then 20 yeah. percent of my equity portfolio is the long bond, the 30 year Treasury TLT. I think we've seen the highs and rates and I do not think we've seen the lows in stocks so I'm very defensively positioned um, yeah. ho ho hopefully I'm wrong and we don't see a fallout of the markets but I, I, I tend to believe that there's more trouble to come there are more problems and these issues are not simply going to resolve themselves so you want to avoid the banks then too Mike because you know the first citizen acquisition they're buying 72 billion dollars of assets uh, from Silicon Valley Bank for 56 billion. They're buying all these assets at a 22% discount. A lot of people think that that's going to send the regionals higher. Would you buy any of the regionals here? You, you know, I, you may get a small pop in the regionals, but this is not a sector that you want to be investing in with an inverted yield curve. Right. It, it is very difficult for banks to lend and make money when short term interest rates are north of five percent. And you're going to continue to see deposit outflows into the, to, into uh, money market funds and short term treasuries. I mean, you can yeah. get one tenth of one percent if you're lucky on your checking and savings at J.P. Morgan, probably one of the safest banks in the world. Or you can get five oh, percent in a money market or five percent in a short term treasury. So look, this is a very difficult environment for banks and generally uh, for the big banks. I, I, I don't like like investing in them because the regulation is so high, the capital requirements are so high. It's just unfortunately the lack of regulation uh, in San Francisco for Silicon Valley Bank has brought upon us this crisis. Well, we're going to see a lot of Fed uh, officials speaking out this week, Catherine, I should say. But we've seen a number of times on his private jet. So we don't know, Michael. M M Maria, um, John Kerry is the perfect <clears throat> epitome of the emperor has no clothes. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> this climate religion is utter and complete nonsense, and it is running our country into the ground. It is um, it, it is hard to put into words how bad this is. In 1975, we were 14 percent renewables a decade ago. We were 18 percent renewables, and that's gone from 18 percent to 19 percent with a four trillion dollar investment. OK, we are never going to be, I shouldn't say never, but not certainly not in my lifetime, 100 percent renewables or a majority renewables. And simply because fossil fuels provide the most effective, cost effective and reliable energy that we use for everything. OK, and John Kerry also points out here that this Inflation Reduction Act, which he mentions at the end, is just the Green New Deal by a different name. This is going to dramatically lower the competitiveness, the quality of life, the cost of living uh, for all Americans, especially the those in the working and middle class. All right. If they were serious about the climate, we'd be building nuclear power plants left and right, and we are not. If he was serious about the climate, he'd be riding a bike everywhere and not flying on his private jet. I mean, this guy is a joke. Yeah, I mean, Lee, come on. Now New York may become the. F and joining me for all the hot topics all morning long this morning is Michael Lee and Lee Carter. Michael, we are on the doorstep of another potential crisis, a fight between Republicans and Democrats about the debt ceiling. It has to be raised. The U.S. cannot blow off its bills, uh, but the Republicans want some spending cuts in order to agree to that. Uh, so I want to get your take here. And I have to reiterate something discussed earlier, and that is the regulations that are going to come out of these hearings uh, that we're waiting on this week, Tuesday and Wednesday. It's amazing to me that there were no stress testing for the major banks around the potential for interest rates going higher. You know how long we've been talking about these stress tests that, the, that were put in place after 2008 and the bank collapsed then. How come they didn't have any tests if interest rates were going to go higher? Well, Maria, it's beyond that. It's the local. And no other bank is allowed to have basically 100% of their customer base in a single industry. 
right? Because higher interest rates crush tech investments, crush tech valuation, which led to higher de normal depositor withdrawal, which led to the bank run, which led them moving over the wall to getting to selling their held to maturity assets, which also had been crushed by a run up in interest rates. So kind of a perfect storm, but this is what the regulator exists for. If you can't enforce rules on the books, why come up with new rules? And then, yeah. and, and then talking about the debt ceiling, uh, we, we have to fight this fight because uh, we're $32 trillion in debt, and now the Biden, Biden administration is proposing a trillion and a half to $2 trillion structural deficit going forward. Um, it, it's just, it's party's over, okay? The, the mismanagement of COVID and the government response to this has put us in such a precarious situation. We now have an $8.5 trillion Fed balance sheet. We're $32 trillion in debt. Okay, from just four years ago, when that number was $20 trillion and $4 trillion. Yeah. Okay, we're running out of options, and so the Republicans uh, need to go to war on this. And we will not default on the debt. We will not default on Social Security or Medicare. Okay, the government, after those, the government needs to make some choices. But for Janet Yellen to suggest that we are somehow going to default on either one of those is just a brazen, bold face lie. Okay, it is yeah, not I, reality, and the Republicans need to fight with everything they can because otherwise, uh, you know, our whole country is just going to blow up financially. Well, the other thing is they won't admit that any of their spending caused inflation late. I mean, give me a break. They borrowed $5 trillion. Patty believes that as the Republicans have been attacking this White House's policy on the border since he walked into the White House. Maria, I just got to add one thing. Uh, the Democrats pretend that inflation is this imaginary force that no yeah. one can see coming and no one can control. Yet somehow, mm -hmm. man today by driving his car is directly responsible for the rain falling from the sky. It, yeah. is, it is so insane that they will not acknowledge that they're yeah. spending, particularly the fiscal stimulus, the last few rounds, caused this hyperinflation, which caused Silicon Valley Bank to fail, which put us in the yeah. situation we are in right now. Well, at the end of the year, right before the Republicans took the gavel, they jammed through another $1.9 trillion omnibus. I mean, of course, they're not going to admit it. Let's take a break and then take a look at markets this morning. We are looking at a big...